So we're going to start our discussion with an overview of Java Lambda expressions. And in this part of the lesson, I'll explain what a Lambda expression is and why they provide a foundational functional programming feature for modern Java. Modern Java is basically anything from Java 8 onwards. We're now at Java 20, and the last dozen or so releases have had all support for Lambda expressions. And we'll also show some simple examples that'll highlight Lambda expression syntax and give an overview of some of its semantics. We'll also talk a bit about how Lambda expressions can be used to represent a wide range of code block usages in Java. So you'll see the scope in which they can be applied. So what is a Lambda expression? A Lambda expression is very straightforward. It's an unnamed block of code that might have some parameters. So here's a super duper simple example we're gonna take a look at in more detail in just a minute. So this is making a new thread. Thread is a unit of computation that can perform some operations running potentially concurrently with other threads within a process. And this thread's constructor expects an instance of type runnable. So you can see we have thread and the thread has a constructor which takes a runnable and a runnable is a very simple functional interface in Java that defines a single run method that takes no parameters and returns no results. The syntax for Lambda expressions is fairly straightforward. This particular use, which is an open close paren, indicates that this Lambda expression takes no parameters at all. And we'll talk later about other examples where we show Lambda expressions that take parameters. So this is a very simple one because of course, the run runnables run method doesn't take any parameters. There's an arrow, which is a syntactic construct that separates the possibly empty parameter list as in this case, from the so-called body of the Lambda. And the body of the Lambda, Lambda defines the computation. This is a Lambda runnable body that simply says, hello world. It prints hello world out to the standard output. There's no need for curly braces when the Lambda body is something simple like this, just a single expression or just a void method invocation. We'll see later when we have more than a single expression or a single statement, then you need to surround the Lambda expression with open, closed, curly braces. But for something as simple as this, we don't need to do that at all. Lambda expressions are very compact since they only focus on the computation or the computations to perform and have almost no other syntactic vinegar, as I like to call it, which makes it more obscure. Conversely, Here's how you could have written this code the old school way with an anonymous inner class, which requires more code to write. We have to say new runnable. We have to say public void run. We have to surround things with open, close, curly braces, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So just more complicated, more carpal tunnel syndrome inducing. As I mentioned earlier, Lambda expressions can also work with multiple parameters. This example is something else we'll take a look at later. It's in my GitHub repository. And in this example, we have a string array called name array, which has the names of some people, Barbara, James, Mary, and so on. And we're going to go ahead and sort those names. And we're going to use a very simple Lambda expression that takes a string S and a string T, because that's what sort expects. It expects comparisons that know how to compare two elements in the array. And it'll compare S with T as strings, ignoring case. So it's a case insensitive comparison. And you can see how nice and clean and concise that is. Just, just the expression of the computation, very, very little else. Lambda expressions can be stored, passed, and executed later. And we'll take a look at this in an, as an example very shortly as well. So here we define ourselves a runnable R where we're storing the Lambda expression, which is just going to print hello world, in a, and it's going to store it into a variable. We're then going to pass that variable, that runnable, as a parameter to the thread constructor. And then when we start the thread, that will execute that Lambda expression later. In other words, after the runtime thread stack's been created, after the thread started to run, at that point, that's when the system println will print out hello world after things have started. So that's a good example of storing, passing, and executing the Lambda expressions later in some other context. 
It turns out that Lambda expressions can cover a very wide range of usages. So we can use them for runnable or callable tasks. We already saw the use of a Lambda expression for a runnable. Here's another simple example that uses a so-called callable, where we're going to submit a callable Lambda expression that will concurrently multiply two big fraction objects together. This is using something called the, the common fork join pool. We won't really talk about that right away, but it's a way of running things in the background and multiplying these fractions in the background, in the background thread. You can also use Lambda expressions as comparator and filter functions for Java collections. So here, for instance, we're gonna make ourselves a list of fruits, and we're gonna go ahead and add some fruits, apple, orange, pear, banana, and so on. And then we're gonna sort it, and we're gonna pass in F1 and F2 for fruit one and fruit two, and we're gonna do a case-sensitive comparison using a Lambda expression. So that's another way to do things. You could also use Lambda expressions for event listeners and event handlers. Here's an example from Android where we're going to post a so-called toast on the Android user interface thread whenever a user clicks a button. So when the user clicks a button, then this click listener will go ahead and pop up a toast that will say button clicked and it'll display on the screen very shortly. And then yet another example, we can use Lambda expressions for thread pools and other Java concurrency constructs. Here, for instance, we're creating a Lambda expression that will make a thread factory that will create a new thread with a designated priority, in this case, the normal priority. So these are all different ways you can use Lambda expressions, and we'll take a look at many more examples as we go through this set of lessons. So that's the end of the overview of Java Lambda expressions.